Let's bring in uh, David Bonson of the Bonson Group, CIO over there, joining us right now to talk a little bit more about what's going on in the markets. And David, we'd we'll certainly like to get your thoughts uh, right out of the gate here uh, on, that, I guess, the debate here about the transitory nature uh, of some of these uh, inflation metrics here and just generally where you see it going. Well, I'm firmly in the camp that the broader economic concern we have is for slow and low growth not for overheating inflation. And this is what I think the bond market is telling us as clearly as can be. I think that there is a Japanification playing out, not that the government uh, doesn't want to create inflation, that they simply can't, that the excessive indebtedness is a bigger drag on future growth than the extra M2 money supply is inflationary. And I think this has been a theme since the financial crisis. Now, post-COVID, we have new rounds of QE, obviously significant new rounds of fiscal stimulus, but they're not inflationary because of the diminishing return that we get from this point in the debt-to-GDP relationship. David, what then to do? If you're guaranteed to lose money in bonds after inflation, do you just keep buying equities at record highs? Well, I think you, people have to be selective with equities. And so I would, I'm not an index investor. And I think that you, that's a good argument against indexing. One would have to pick their spots. Now, of course, we're dividend growth investors. So if it sounds like I'm talking my book, it's because I am. <laughs> but I truly believe in it. And I believe in it even in an environment that doesn't make it so screamingly beneficial as right now. If you do have disinflationary pressures, you want to focus on quality. You want balance sheet strength. You want to, you know, those high PE stocks. You want to be concerned about valuation. So we think there's a little more value, a little more quality in this universe. But from those that are concerned about the inflationary standpoint, you're getting that year over year growth in income that is far above the inflation rate. So I think that dividend growing names give you the best of both worlds with growing income and cash flow, yet also a higher quality portfolio of names. Do you think money should be staying within the United States, David? Well, we do. If one wants to go into a more growth-oriented approach, we like plenty of the emerging markets. Not uh, Again, not indexing, not buying all the Chinese technology names, but we think from a domestic growth in those local emerging markets, there are opportunities. Uh, but uh, Europe is still a very difficult story, and, and Japan is a very difficult story. Uh, there may be bottom-up names that are investable there, but from a risk-reward trade-off, we think the U.S. is going to offer better um, uh, you know, returns, uh, particularly when you adjust for risk. Can you talk about some of the individual names that maybe you're looking at? I mean, there are opportunities out there that people have been pitching in energy, in real estate. I'm curious as to where you stand. Yeah, so again, we, we like those sectors, but we like them because there are names in those sectors that we care for. Um, you know, J.P. Morgan is an interesting name reported yesterday. You talked about Bank of America's weakness today, and I saw your segment a moment ago on some of the weakness in financials. And a lot of people have this idea that the flatness of the yield curve is the issue. But I think J.P. Morgan is a great example of a name that only cares about net interest margin a little bit. You really have a credit card business, a home mortgage origination business, investment banking that makes it very different than most of the mega financial names. They've outperformed all of them since the crisis. Their dividend growth in the last eight years is 160 percent. The stock, not coincidentally in that time period, has tripled. And so you look over the last three weeks, even though there's been a little weakness since the, the Fed minutes and so forth. Uh, JP, I believe, is up about 10 percent in, in a short period of time. I think they trade off a different phenomena than the rest of the banking sector. We really like JP and their commitment to dividend growth. What is the path of least resistance then for yields? Is it lower or higher? Well, I think with bond yields, it's very possible they get to a point where they can't go much lower, but then you're still range bound. Um, the idea of the 10-year coming back to 3% anytime soon, I think, is a fantasy. Um, I personally would love to see the 10-year up around 2%, 2.5%. I don't consider that remotely inflationary. You want to have a 10-year bond yield suggesting that you're going to get at least 2% 
real GDP growth for the next 10 years. But the bond yield is speaking more to growth concerns than it is inflationary concerns. And ultimately, I believe that comes down to the indebtedness. And it's very difficult to get out of that, uh, as Japan has taught us, for over three decades. We want to thank you, David Bonson, CIO of the Monsung Group.